The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, buns and roses, let's talk about books. You see, people always say, hey, Steve, is it you who has been setting fire to all of those orphanages? And my answer to that is, of course, you can't prove anything, you pig. <laughs> people all because I, 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 I burned off my fingerprints a long time ago, so there's nothing to tie me to the scene. Yes. People also say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that I have been a loyal employee, allegedly, at my local bookstore for almost 17 years now. Yes. 17 years. Which part's alleged, the loyalty or the employee part? Both. Both. In fact, I, I'm gesturing to all of me. <laughs> I'm just all allegedly. Whatever you can say about me. No, it's just any, everything that just, 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 just yeah. All right, cool. We're married. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a good father. Allegedly. Oh, it all, no, it's all, no, up, no, sure. no, no, it's all alleged. If my work history were a person that I would be starting to freak out about prom and complaining that my parents yeah. don't understand me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as such, I really do have my brittle skeleton-like fingers on the pulse of the book world, and I am here to rub my skeleton fingers all over you, you fuzzy little man-peach. <laughs> With this week's unforgettably forgettable episode of Notes from the Bookstore! And the last time that we were here for Notes from the Bookstore, we eschewed convention. Yes. We got convention. And we eschewed it. We mm -hmm. said, hey, look at this convention. Eschew, 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 eschew. <laughs> we eschewed it. Eschew, eschew, eschew. That's me eschewing convention, honey. Yeah. Eschew, eschew, eschew. And then, and then we, we, what we did last time, we finished some classic book titles that left us hanging. Like, are you there? God, it's me, Margaret. And I know why the cage bird sings. Well, this week on Notes from the Bookstore, we are once again getting our already well-worn, tried-and-true format and throwing it out of a moving vehicle at high speeds. So yes. tuck and roll, format! Because we are once again boot-scoot boogieing into unknown territory. I would like, if I may, mm -hmm. uh, take you on a strange journey. Uh-huh. The year was 2000. Wow, 2000. 2000. Yeah. Man, that was so long ago. In fact, it was 17 years ago. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. uh, allegedly. Allegedly. A lot of things happened in the year 2000. Let's talk about some of the things that happened in the year 2000. Yes. In the year 2000, there was a year-wide sale. There was a sale, and it happened all year. It was a, a, a big sale, and everybody was taking advantage of it. In the year 2000, you could save 50 to 75%, even 90% off all Y2K merchandise. Really? Yes. Yeah, that was a good deal. Uh-huh. Have you? Eyeing that Y2K preparation survival bucket, now's your time to get it. Yeah. Because it's 80% off at your local Target. I wish I had a six pack of Billy beer. Yeah. You know, so yeah. why not? Yeah. yeah. Stock up. The future will come one day. Yeah. In the year 2000, police found cocaine and Valium in Robert Downey Jr.'s hotel room, a scandal he never recovered from. Yes. Robert Downey who? People mm -hmm. now say. Yeah. And if, and if I may do something that I love doing, and that's getting anything I'm talking about and turning it to Lucha Libre, <laughs> when does he get to just be Robert Downey? Yeah. 
because Rey Mysterio was, for a very long time, Rey Mysterio Jr., yes. because he was the son of the legendary Rey Mysterio, who came first before him. That was Rey Mysterio Jr.'s father, mm -hmm. and so he was Rey Mysterio. And he worked really hard, worked insanely hard, and made a name for himself. And then by the time he you know, was WWE champion and uh, main eventing WrestleMania, then he was, you know, Rey Mysterio. And he is now just Rey Mysterio. He lost the junior. He earned this name. It's it's less about, like, you know, I was talking to Natasha about this, and, yeah. and Natasha said, well, is Robert Downey Jr.'s dad dead? And I, and I said, it's not really about whether or not the father is alive or not. It's about becoming so famous that you aren't a junior anymore. But does possibly Robert Downey Jr. have to beat his dad in a steel cage match? No, that's a possibility. Yeah. That is very much a possibility. But it's just what I'm what I'm saying is it like who is Robert Downey Sr. that we're still calling Robert Downey Robert Downey Jr.? Isn't he famous enough? Mm-hmm. Then well, we can Robert, just say Robert Downey. It's not like people are saying, oh, which one? Yeah. You know? It, 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 it's also one of those things. Robert Downey Jr. is one of those people where we know he's Robert Downey Jr. and we know his dad is famous and we don't know why. Exactly. You know? I don't know who Robert Downey Sr. is. No. I, I think I've seen his name in this or that once. Or so. I, I, don't, I don't know who the hell he is. And, um,. Oh, I was just thinking about him. I can't think of who he is now. Uh, John Ritter. John Ritter. Yes. Not a junior, but it's like, yeah. who the fuck is, is Tex Ritter? Okay, he was some singing cowboy guy. Oh, great. Who cares? Yeah. Oklahomans, probably. Yeah. But yeah, I just think, I just think it's time... It's time for Robert Downey Jr. to just become Robert Downey. I think he's earned it. I think yeah. he has earned it now. In the year 2000, and this is a true story, in the year 2000, the executives of Blockbuster Video sat atop their massive office tower in a meeting. Yeah. They're talking business, business, business. Figures, numbers, business. Well, gang, sales are up. New membership rates are up. It's up, up, up for us here at Blockbuster Video. Well, if there's no other news, I guess we can uh, wrap up this meeting. Oh, wait, there is one tiny bit of news. Uh, we have a chance to purchase some brand new startup business called, what's the name? Where's, where, where, the, he where the hell is that name? Oh, here it is. Netflix. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Should we purchase this Netflix? Yeah, you know what? I agree with you. We don't need it. We're Blockbuster Video. We are going to be on top forever. <laughs> In retrospect, that might not have been the best idea. And how did they? How did they fuck it up? Because uh, there was a short yeah. period where I had uh, Netflix and Blockbuster. Yeah, yeah. And then I just I couldn't. I just couldn't afford them both. Yeah. Uh, and Blockbuster was fucking far superior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that many times. Because you would have, like, you didn't pay for membership at Blockbuster anymore. You know, they just took your license and information and shit. Yeah. You know, not like when the video started and you paid like $100 for a video club membership, you yeah. know? Yeah. So that doesn't cost you anything. So you had your regular subscription fee to the online service, which wasn't, it was, they were doing the same C, the DVD distribution that Netflix was doing at the time. Nobody was streaming yet. Yeah. So you would get your movies and that was like exactly like Netflix. Okay. Yeah. Except everyone that you return to a Blockbuster store, you would get a free rental. Yeah. So, you know, you would get like three movies come to you on DVD through the service. 
then you would run down to Blockbuster, drop them off there, and take three movies off the shelf for free. Yeah, that's that's that sounds freaking wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where they fucked up, but I yeah. miss that. That's 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 really an impossible thing to try and explain to like a to like a Maxwell, you know, and that's sad. Yeah. Yeah. But then they finally pissed me off and they went out of business. I'm not yeah. sure how those two are connected, but <laughs> that's that's when I found out that Blockbuster movie Blockbuster video they were editing their fucking movies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that pissed me off so much. Yeah. In particular, um, when Martyrs had come out. Remember Martyrs? Yes. Have you seen Martyrs? Yes. I, I, I know of it. And Martyrs is a hard edge fucking movie. Yes. With a hard edge point. You know? Like, it's really trying to say something. It's just that what they're saying is really fucked up. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, I remember Martyrs. I remember Martyrs. Yeah, it's got that weird twist, and there's, like, a cult, and they're trying to figure out, like, the secrets. To, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. everybody in the potosphere, you know, they were all talking about this movie, and and... It was highly controversial. Some people didn't like it because it was gory as hell, you know, and it was very violent. And a lot of people didn't like it about that. And then other people were very much into. But yes, but did you see why they were doing it all? Yeah, you know, there was yeah, a reason. Yeah, there was a reason for it. Yeah. So I rented from Blockbuster, and I watch it, and I'm like. This movie's a piece of fucking shit. I, yeah. I, I, have I gotten stupid? I have no idea what's going on in this movie. <laughs> this is nothing like anything I've heard anybody talk about. Yeah. What the fuck? And then I really realized what was happening when I decided to rent a Serbian film from Blockbuster, and it ended up being a 12-minute movie about an actor. <laughs> I, rented, I rented Jackass the movie from Blockbuster, and it was a 20-minute film about good friends. Yeah. And I rented it on... They still weren't streaming yet, but I rented it off of Netflix. And I was like, oh, okay. I got it now. <laughs> now I know yeah. what everybody's talking about. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a movie that I need to track down, and it's a it's a move it's a documentary about Netflix that Netflix will never show. Yeah. And in order to celebrate like some sort of like the like the birth of Netflix streaming, they decided to have this contest to see who could stay up the longest and they were trying right. to have people stay up through all of Friday, Saturday and Sunday watching Netflix. <laughs> right? And they set up this like fake living room on like a sidewalk in some big city, let's say New York or something. And they got some stand up comedian to host it. And he said, yeah, I'll stay up all night. This is going to be fun. And it's a documentary about him slowly going fucking insane trying to stay up three days in a row <laughs> and like and of course it's yeah 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 and it's and it's yeah like by the end of the documentary he's like naked on the street like freaking the fuck out oh my God. yeah like netflix almost killed this man <laughs> I, I, i'm I just heard about it i'm that yeah. that sounds like fun it sounds yeah, like no, fun. If we can never no, track no. it down we yeah. definitely should, but I'm just thinking, like, you know, it's like 11.59 on Saturday, Saturday night, and you're like, okay, okay, doing good. One more day, one more day. we got two down, two down, two-thirds of this is over, one last third, one last third. We're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to make it through the whole Netflix challenge. Ah, oh, fucking Sling Blade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh man. 
this is gonna suck. Like, that's a good movie, but I'm not gonna stay awake through that shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I need shit to explode and blood to squirt to get through this next 24 hours. Yeah. So, in the year, in the year 2000, uh, one of the biggest stories of the year was the fact that wedding bells were ringing for uh, uh, lovebirds Billy Bob Thornton and Angelina Jolie. Theirs was a love to last a lifetime. Yes, it was. Also, in the year 2000, Richard Hatch won the first ever Survivor. Then yes. he parlayed that success into his new current career as, hey, you remember that guy who won Survivor the first year? He was all like naked and shit, and then he <laughs> won. And then he, you saw him like cameo on a bunch of like old shitty TV shows. Like I think he was in an episode of Ted Danson's Becker. Yeah. And then he went to jail for tax evasion. What the hell Did was he? that guy's name? Oh, crap. It's on the tip of my tongue. Oh, you know what? It doesn't matter. Yeah. He was he was one of the ones who um who had returned for the season that I liked. Yeah. Where they had all of the returning winners. Yeah. Cause that was awesome. Because everybody knew how to play the game. And it was it was just absolutely cutthroat. Yeah. Nobody trusted anybody. Nor should anybody. Yeah, that, I imagine that. Yeah, I imagine that would be the the year you want to watch the the freaking show. Yeah. Other than that, In I the- wasn't I wasn't a huge Survivor fan. So, yeah. yes, Richard Hatch, Richard and Hatch. Survivor in general. Although I hear that shit's still on. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's weird. My favorite memory, though, I'm going to switch gears. Uh, Amazing Race. Oh, God, I love the Amazing Race. I kind of liked... The amazing Race. I really liked the first season. The first season I had, the, the, had the two... They had the gay couple. Uh, yeah. They were... I don't know. They were brown. I don't know if they were Mexican or Indian or anything like that. What they were was they were really, really gay. Yeah. You know, gayness just hung all over them. Yeah. And it was, they were so much fun. I remember. And they, uh, okay, to be, not meaning to be derogatory, but I don't know how else to put it. They were total queens. They were just. They were just yeah. queens, and and queens just have a certain way of living their lives. I don't think, you know, and that's how they played the game. And the one point that just cracked me up is that they had they had to get from wherever to wherever because that's just how the show worked. Yeah, and there was some kind of problem with that, and all of the teams were panicking, and they were like. Like they're doing the interviews after, and they were like, "Well, we just went into this hotel over here and spoke to the concierge, and the concierge set, us, set up with flights and had a limousine come pick us up." <laughs> it's yeah. like, yeah. that's genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would have never <laughs> have thought of that in a million years. I remember one never year, like, around. I remember one year around the beginning, the Amazing Race. It the whole thing ended in Phoenix. Yeah. And everyone was like, uh, couple number one has arrived at the Sky Harbor International Airport. Now they need to get to the Bank One ballpark in downtown Phoenix. And they're like, okay, well, we're going to take this freeway. And I'm like, no, don't take that freeway. It sucks. You're going to get caught in traffic. No, use the streets. <laughs> And then this couple is like, let's take this freeway. No, let's take the streets. Yes, they're going to beat the other couple. Like, <laughs> like, I always liked The Amazing Race, but that was the one year where, like, I'm screaming at the TV. Yeah. No, don't go through there. The zoo is there. You're going to get stuck. See, that, that was it. Oh, the, just with that one move, 
they became my team. They were the ones I was rooting for. I was like, just for doing that, you totally deserve to win this whole game. Yeah. And I just, okay. I would just root them on. They were great. In the okay. year 2000. In the year 2000. <laughs> yes. In a, two things, two things I want to add to what you were just saying. Yes. Uh, be- before we move on. Number one, I think. I, I, I don't know when the last time was I watched The Amazing Race, long ass time ago, but I still think about it because I'll be driving and I do so much fucking driving. Uh, I'm driving and I see someone behind me and they're like three cars down, but you know, I'm just driving, you know, on in my lane and I'm like, I'm not going to move. I'm just, I'm staying here. It's traffic. You know, it's pointless to try and get ahead. It's just yeah. bumper to bumper traffic. I'm not going to try. And you see that person who's like four cars behind you that's just weaving through traffic trying to get ahead, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm going to cut this person off. And, oh, here's an opening. I'm going to go over here. And this person cuts me off. And I'm like, okay, but, you know, it's traffic. And then you get (laughs) to the next stoplight. And it's like, oh, look at that. Now we're right next to each other. You just got amazing race. (laughs) It's that amazing race thing where it's like this, this couple is like, is like eight hours ahead, and oh wait, you all have to wait for the train tickets. Yeah. So the next day, you're all starting as equals. Don't you feel a fool, couple yeah. who is so far ahead? Now everyone's equal. I think about that all the time while I'm driving. You just got amazing race. Look at that. You're bobbing and weaving like crazy, like Michael J. Fox drinking 10 Red Bulls, and I'm just staying here, slow and steady. And yet we're right next to each other. You should feel a fool, sir yes. or madam. Uh-huh. You should feel a fool. Number two, um, there is a Canadian cartoon on Netflix that I think you might like. Uh, I, okay, this sounds familiar. A quick look to Bella to see if she's paying attention. Bella is not paying attention. It's called Total Drama Island. And it's a cartoon reality show parody. And it's basically just it's not like, like a, that fucking drawn together or tripping the rip. No, 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 no. It, it's essentially like a violent Looney Tunes uh, survivor. Just imagine a survivor cartoon, but the guy running survivor kind of sort of wants you all to die. <laughs> it's definitely not for kids maybe it's for teens yeah but it's really good they do really good characterization in their teams and alliances and essentially they you know they when they went about making the cartoon they did studies and they they asked people and kids and teens and stuff like what do you like about reality shows and they said oh well we like this and this and this and this so they based their car, their silly cartoon on what people really do like about reality shows. So they've got these really strong characters and these ongoing plots and these these alliances and people are harboring secrets. It's a really good show. It just happens to be a stupid cartoon. <laughs> but essentially, it's like a, a violent survivor. And for teens, it's called Total Drama Island. It's on Netflix. Bella was obsessed with it for a very long time. They they, there's a shit ton of episodes. Really? And they're still them in Canada. It's a, apparently, it's a big thing in Canada. I but might yeah, have to give total, it a try. Yeah, Total Drama Island. If you just want to put something on, this is a great thing to put on. Yeah. Yeah. And Bell is still not paying attention. There's also a lot of Total Drama Island porn out there, just FYI. <laughs> If there are any female characters that you are attracted to, it, that is out there. Just letting you know. Okay. In the year 2000, only one movie totally ruled the box office. One movie set the nation on fire. I am, of course, talking about uh, Mary Kane and Ashley Olsen's Our Lips Are Sealed. <laughs> Biggest box office hit of all time. When you do not adjust for adjust for inflation, everyone box. in the nation had Mary Kate and Ashley fever. Box office? It actually. I thought all this shit was straight to DVD. Oh no, no! This played in every theater in America. 
My, my, my. Like, literally. Literally. I'm, I mean literally every screen in America yeah. played this movie. There were... I... They, oh, we gotta kick this art film out. We gotta kick out this Holocaust documentary. We got the <laughs> new movie, Kate and Ashley Olsen film. That's how big this movie was. Now, obviously, I thought they were cute when they were kids on Full House. Everybody did. That was their damn job. Be cute. Yeah. That's all you yeah. got to do here. You know, then I didn't see them for a while. And then I saw them all grown up when they, when they were, when they reached enough popularity to get my fucking attention, you know? Yeah. And I thought they were kind of hot in a weird fucking alien way. Yeah, before they like they got, really like, look re- reptilian. What? Yeah, before they got before before they got all skinny from the drugs and partying, they did look uh, very attractive. Yeah, and now yeah. they're they're looking monstrous. And are they thirty yet? How old are they? They look skeletal. They look yeah, skeletal. Yeah, they're more they're still more fairly young. They yeah. are still fairly young. Yeah. yeah. You, I, I bet you anything. You lay them down on the dirt, they turn brown. I bet yeah. you. Yeah. You know, their tongues have got to be just whipping in and out, whipping in and out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Can you Put guess, Bunny? Put them on Bunny? plaid, they go insane. Yeah. Can you guess, Bunny, what the number one video game was in the year 2000? In the year 2000. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go with kidding? I'm gonna go with Quake. Oh no, you're just playing, Bunny. Everybody knows that the biggest video game in the year 2000 was Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen's Magical Mystery Mall for the Game Boy Color and the PS One. <laughs> oh, Bunny, you're Everybody so had silly. That. Everybody had that. Everybody had that. You're I know just you're just playing. Us. Yeah, I know you're just playing. It's okay. <laughs> also, in the year 2000, this one made Bella want to slap me. Just, just to give you a taste. Okay. This one, this one made uh, Bella cuss at me and want to slap me. Also, in the year 2000, America started getting really excited over the news that 2001 would be the year that the U.S. finally had its very first 9-11. <laughs> yes. 9-11 fever swept the nation. There were 9-11 countdowns. There was a lot of buzz. You well, know, I, I, Hotels were sold out so far in advance. I, I like, told you, I told you my nine eleven story, right? What was your nine eleven story? Uh, about being the Antichrist. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, I believe so. So, for our yes. new listeners, let me just run through it quick. Yes. I w- I found them on. I found them. I found episodes downloadable on my computer, so I had started listening to Art Bell. Art Bell <laughs> is well, how the fuck do we describe Art Bell anymore? Art, saying Art, that Art. he's saying that he's like the saner Alex Jones sounds really fucking weird. Yeah, uh, Art, <laughs> Art Bell was Alex Jones before Alex Jones was Alex Jones. Art Bell is um. Jesus. Larry like, like, Art Bell you're... is Larry King, who likes UFOs and shit. Seriously, <laughs> you know? you're getting me. You're, you're Kenobiing me right now, Art <laughs> Bell. So now that's a name I've not heard in a long time. So one of the things that Art and he had, he had an AM radio show, and um, one of the things that Art Bell used to like to do is open up the phone lines. So that the Antichrist can call in. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, no, I was streaming it off a of real audio. Right. So, <laughs> so I was picking it up live. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Real and audio. So he'll put on callers calling up and saying that they're the Antichrist and things like that. And of course, Art Bell is all about the Y2K, oh, you know, because he's a conspiracy nut, you know? Yeah. He's all about the Y2K. A lot of his shows are about Y2K and all this kind of shit. And he opens up his line for the Antichrist to call in and, like, 
just about everybody I hear who's calling and claiming to be the Antichrist are doing like a Larry Talbert impersonation. You know? Like yeah. this like this tortured oh, I'm the Antichrist. Oh my god. You know, just, just acting like this and I was like, you know, no. I got it. <laughs> I have it in my head what the Antichrist would be. And I might have even tried to call once, you yeah. know, but I had everything laid out that I was going to say, you know, first, nice. like, first of all, you know, just like, yeah, hi, I'm the Antichrist. You wanted me to call? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm returning your message. So, I'm, yeah, so I'm calling, you know, I got, I got shit to do. So what do you Did want? Did you need something? Yeah. 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 Nice. And then one of the things I was planning on talking about since it was Art Bell was like, you know, you freaking people, you go on and on about Y2K. You know what's going to happen in Y2K? What's, go what's really going to happen in the year 2000? Nothing. You want to know why? Because I think that's going to be hysterical. <laughs> yeah. But you better yeah. watch your ass in 2001. Ah, that would have been nice. That would have been nice. That was that was the line I was planning on using. If I yeah, got through, nice. I'm I'm like kind of glad I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you'd be you'd be in Gitmo right now. <laughs> yeah. Also, in the year 2000, a fiendishly handsome, skinny brown man. Let's call him Steve. Mm -hmm. Had just been let go with Finger Twin Towers. Hashtag never forget. Had just been let go from his job as manager at a failing Hollywood video in Glendale, Arizona. Uh -huh. Because apparently hating your job and actively sabotaging your own store is apparently frowned upon in the video store community. <laughs> What'd you do? And look. Steve's only crime was an intense hatred for his job. Yeah. And he gave away free rentals like water. And a number of other things. A few VHS tapes might have gone missing and an old VHS player. The point is... Yes. This young man was jobless, aimless, and sub some third thing ending in less. Chickenless? I don't know. <laughs> But it's not, it's not like the video store was uh, running perfectly without Steve. The uh, assistant store manager yeah. was a guy named Mark, and he kept a framed autograph picture of Jenna Jameson on his desk. Okay. Because he would talk to anyone who would listen. His dreams of one day becoming a porn actor. Oh, God. And I'm pretty sure that he slept with one of the 17-year-old uh, employees at said video store. Okay. So Steve was let go. In a back room or something? Store. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. Possibly at his uh, no-doubt lonely apartment. But the point is, uh, is that uh, our young hero, Steve, recently turned 21, was desperately searching for a job, any job that would not only pay the bills, of which yeah. there were none, but also a job that would not be too hard. He didn't want to try that much. Yeah. So um, his unemployment lasted only about a week. In his desperation for another job, Steve remembered that his big ex at the time, Sarah, a uh, big time manic pixie dream girl still is. We're friends on Facebook. He's yeah. the only, she's the only ex who doesn't have a, a burned bridge behind yeah. her. So anyway, her brother worked at a bookstore at Metro Center Mall, once a titan of malls. That's where they filmed Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And in 2000, it was starting a slow decline, but it was still good. They had a Chili's and a big ass movie theater and a wonderful food court. Anywho. Steve applied for a job at the end of October, and by November 1st of the year 2000, he was gainfully employed with a major bookstore chain. He was only hired, originally, he was only hired 
Mm-hmm. Because he said that he was friends, good, good, close BFFs with Sarah's brother, Matt. Okay. He wrote that on his uh, application, his original application. Apparently, young Matt, unbeknownst to Steve, because he didn't really know Matt at all, <laughs> a, he, he, he was basically lying about being friends with him just to get a foot in the door. But apparently, Matt was literally... Get a foot in the door to the Hollywood video. No, to get a foot in the door to the bookstore chain. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, Steve has been let go from Hollywood Video, and now he's trying to get another job. And oh. uh, he he just got a job at the bookstore. He only got a job because he mentioned, "Oh, I am good friends with Matt, uh, a, a a an employee at your store. We are BFFs." Uh, he, Matt, unbeknownst to Steve, because they were uh, not friends at all, Matt had just left the store. And apparently, Matt was literally the best employee that the store ever had. Okay. In fact, the majority of Steve's interview was just talking about Matt and how great he was. Okay. So Steve lied to get hired at the bookstore 17 years ago. It wasn't the biggest lie ever. Mm -hmm. It it was an itty-bitty lie. There are worse lies out there. Steve wasn't colluding with Russia. No. It's weird how often you can prove. I hear the word colluding. Yes. That's weird. That's a weird word. Ooh, mm-hmm. is he colluding? Is he going to collude? Was there collusion? Mm-hmm. Was there collusioning happening? How many people this? were involved in the collusion? Yeah. It's a weird, there's a weird amount of collusion being used in our vernacular right now. Uh, Steve didn't not inhale. <laughs> but it worked and our hero was hired. So in November of two uh, so so in November of the year 2000, Steve was a bookstore in Phoenix, Arizona. And that, my vague friends, is where we will leave the story for this week. Our hero is starting at work at a bookstore. Will he fail? Will he succeed? Will he have problems with people? Will there be a large amount of smoking and drinking? By the way, spoiler alert. The answers to those four questions are nope, kind of, yes, and hell yes. <laughs> so uh, this is a new uh, ongoing feature within Notes from the Bookstore. Call it an origin story, if you will. An origin story. Nice. An origin story. So uh, come back next week for more of that hazy story. Now on to some news, to a little bit of news, a little bit of news. Your local bookstore is having a lot of sales right now, a bunch of sales, and you should come on down. Here are a few of them. Number one, we have a great table set up, a big pine table set up, 20% off all fiction books that you don't want to (laughs) read. Very excited about that. We have some great books that you do not want to purchase on sale right now. Here's a tip for you, a little pro tip. Don't look at the table and say, oh, my God, here's a book that I want. They will they will remove the sale from that. <laughs> they will take it off the table if you say you want to buy one of the books. Everyone is listening to everything all of the time. That's how we all should act now. Has has the new Stephen King book come out yet? Um, no, we just got in the movie version of Mr. Mercedes. Okay. which is a three-part series that he has done recently. Yeah. And it's weird because it, it's the movie cover, and then it says on on the cover, you know, I expected to see soon to be a major motion picture starring <laughs> famous people, but instead it says, like, soon to be an AT&T original show. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Wow. Is that is that's a thing? Yeah, everybody's streaming everything. So apparently Stephen King is in the AT&T U-verse world or something. I don't fucking know. Oh, God. I didn't even so, know that existed. But I was I yeah. was thinking about the new book he was supposed to be coming out with. Uh, hey, I was hit by a car, remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so 20% off all fiction books that you don't want to read. We had a Marvel graphic novel sale for about two seconds, and then it went back to our regular everything DC is on sale, because as a corporation, we hate Marvel. 
<laughs> I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why. Yeah. But uh, we love DC and hate Marvel as a as a corporation. Not sure why, but it's just weird. Also, big news with our clearance sale. Yeah. It's now nine percent off. Ooh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and of course, there's our best sellers. 30% off all hardcover best selling books for 69 year old housewives. <laughs> so if you want to read um, legal thrillers, then you should come on down to your local bookstore. And finally, this week, finally, this week, yes, um, a certain store. First uh-huh. off, I would once again like to say, oh, just all of this is fiction. Let's just say that all of this yes. is fiction. None of this is real. Uh, a disclaimer goes not, up on the front of every episode. Yeah, yeah, that's not just about this, but about just existence in general. Mm-hmm. This is just this is all fiction. None of it matters. Do whatever you want. Um, uh, with that being said, uh, I I can neither confirm nor deny the story that's running around right now that Ooh. one of the stores in our district got a 25% score in a secret shop Ooh. 25% not like how good. do you even do that yeah <laughs> and i would also like to neither confirm nor deny the statement that it's not my fault. I was in receiving the entire time. <laughs> so it's not like the secret shoppers go, Hey, Hey, uh, I would like to go into your receiving area and look around. So, so this low score is in no way on me. No. Okay. In no way on me. No, not that it happened in my store. I can neither confirm nor deny that. I'm just saying it's not my fault. <laughs> if it did happen to me, which I'm not saying it did. I'm also not saying it didn't. What I'm saying is, look, a store that I have heard of may or may not have gotten the lowest store in the history of secret shops. Is yes. it mine? Uh, I cannot. I can. I cannot confirm nor deny that. Is it my fault? No. <laughs> in no way my fault. I was in receiving the whole time, listening to Cuban music. <laughs> so, uh, it did or did not happen to me it probably didn't this is all fiction but if it did it wasn't my fault <laughs> if i was on the floor we we would have gotten a 100 it, 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 again this is all fiction this is all yeah. fiction it's important to state that over and over again and that is it for notes from the bookstore this week and remember boys and girls you Two can save 10% on all of your purchases in the store. And all you have to do is not ask me, do you work here? Yes, I work here. I have a freaking name tag. <laughs> I know you're confused at the long-haired Mexican. I know I'm scary. But, yeah, I work here, okay? <laughs> I'm working here for almost 17 years. Yeah, I work here. I work here. Do what do you, you think I what do you think? I just steal name tags and go into various stores pretending to be an employee. I have a name tag. <laughs> also, here's another clue that I work here. I just walked up to you and said, do you need help? There's, <laughs> another, there's another. Oh, you work here? No, I, I'm just a good Samaritan who who uh, walks from town to town helping people and getting into adventures like Kane and Kung Fu. Yes, I work here. <laughs> Damn. 